Hello, warm welcome to today's update. It's Wednesday evening still, the 3rd of November. Now, we want to look particularly this evening, first of all, at deaths. How many deaths has been as a result of this pandemic? Now, in the 1918-19 pandemic, the influenza pandemic, there was probably between 50 and 80 million people died from that. No one's actually quite sure. So in this modern pandemic, you'd think we'd be uh, quite sure and fairly accurate about the figures, but there's quite a lot of uncertainty, as we'll see. But the deaths are much lower than they were in 1918-1919, which, of course, was before the antibiotic era. So, but actually, if you think about this pandemic, we're, we're actually 19 months into this now. So we're into this quite a long time. And uh, John Hopkins' official data, um, over 5 million people have died now according to the Johns Hopkins, which is basically a collation of all the officially government released data from around the world. So basically, governments are saying, well, collectively, there's been five million deaths as a result of sars coronavirus 2 infection with COVID-19. Total cases are 247 million, according to official data, and over 7 billion doses of vaccine given, according to official data. Now, I want to focus, as we've said, more on the deaths particularly. Now, we'll start off with the World Health Organization estimates on deaths, and then we'll go on to look at some potentially more accurate uh, estimates after that. Starting with the World Health Organization, check on the site, it's all there. Now, this is based on excess mortality estimates produced for 2020. So this is 2020 data, and we can, we'll see we better extrapolate this up to modern times. Um, now, World Health Organization say this, um, we're likely facing a significant undercount of total deaths directly and indirectly attributable to COVID-19. Of course, we, this is this is fairly uh, self-evident statement. So the actual people that have died from COVID-19 have been underreported globally. And how many knock-on deaths, the sort of collateral damage, if you like, from COVID-19, patients who haven't been otherwise treated or patients who've died from other intercurrent infections as a result of lockdown, difficulties with lockdown, economic difficulties with lockdowns and the various policies that have been instigated around the world. These, these have also caused deaths. And uh, one way to look at this is, is the total excess mortality in a population. And that's what the world health and organizations doing here now they do make the proviso that many countries still lack functional civil registrations and vital statistics systems so we don't have data for the whole world accurately and they give an example of this which is useful before we just get down to the the specifics so it, in terms of registered deaths compared to the actual number of deaths in europe it's at least 98 percent of deaths are correctly registered in the African region, 90% of people die unrecorded. Only 10% of deaths are recorded. So interestingly, of the deaths in Africa, 90% of people are simply never written down. 90% of deaths. And uh, they'd just be lost to history, one would assume. So uh, great variance in the, uh, the official reporting around the world of deaths, making comparison very difficult. And comparisons are also difficult because countries simply record things in different ways. Even sophisticated countries, even say Germany, the UK, Australia and the United States all record deaths in a slightly different way. So it can be a bit confusing. Um, now, excess mortality is what is going to be looked at in the World Health Organization data here. And this is the difference in the total number of deaths in a crisis, which we've been in, the, the pandemic, compared to those expected under normal circumstances. So how many people overall die? So essentially, this is ignoring how many people are dying from the, the pandemic. It's looking at how many deaths, deaths there have been overall compared to what you would expect. And of course, if we're looking at overall deaths, that should take into account the deaths from the pandemic directly and the deaths from the, the knock-on sort of collateral damage deaths from the pandemic as well. So that therefore includes direct and uh, indirect impacts. Now, the WHO 2020, now this is for 2020. So at the end of 2020, there was 1,813,100 1, official deaths. But the lower bound on that, the lower bound is the uh, World Health Organization put on that is, is 3 million deaths. So we can see there was significant underreporting. So here we see this graphic from the WHO. So 1.8 million officially reported deaths 
actual number of deaths, 3 million or potentially quite a bit more. So at least 3 million. Uh, excess mortality, this is excess deaths over what we would normally uh, expect. So that's the estimate from the World Health Organization. Uh, particularly in the Americas, um, excess mortality estimated range from 1.34 to 1.46 million, which is about 60% more than reported. So in the Americas, they're saying underreported by 60%, 60% more deaths than, than actually reported. European region, um, excess mortality estimates range from, for the total deaths, 1.11 million to 1.21 million, about 50% more deaths than reported. So it's even for the European region where you would expect data to be well collected. So Afra, so um, America's 60% underreported. Of course, this is for the whole America, it's hard to generalise. Europe, 50% underreported. So that was the estimates there from the World Health Organization. Now, the next one I want to go on to is The Economist. Um, now, The Economist magazine has collected pretty good data all the way through this, actually. Um, and they've got quite useful ways of thinking about deaths, particularly they're considering uh, excess deaths as well, like the World Health Organization is. And they take into account about 100 parameters to, to calculate excess deaths. Um, so this is their calculation. Now, um, actual worldwide death toll, they estimate to be not 5 million, but 16.8 million excess deaths. So basically three times three times the official, more than three times the official reported figure for the economist's uh, calculation of excess deaths. And they say there's a 95% probability that there's between 10.3 million to 19.5 million deaths, is what they are saying. Now, their actual closest estimate, um, so is probably, six, well, we've got 17 million there, but 16.8 million is actually what they are estimating so even the the lower range there the, the 10.3 million up to the 19.5 19.6 million um, we see the degree of underreporting. if it's 10.5 it would be 2.1 if it's 17 it would be 3.4 times and 3.9 times if it's the higher 19.6 uh, excess mortality so that's the overall figure from the economist now, The Economist is particularly interesting because it actually, as well as giving the overall figures of deaths, it actually gives uh, specific countries. And this is really, so, so some of this data is actually pretty mind-blowing. And uh, this is based on The Economist's uh, models, as we've said. Um, but they are quite sophisticated ones for collecting data from around the world. So official, <clears throat> official versus actual deaths from The Economist. So first of all, the United States. Official deaths um, now about 748, uh, 748,000, so basically three quarters of a million deaths in the United States, pretty high. Uh, the official, the, the actual number they estimate, uh, excess deaths are getting on for a million. So 860, 860,000 to 1 million from 745,000. So um, deaths underreported in the United States, according to The Economist. Now, China, they're reporting 4,600 deaths. The actual figure from The Economist is not less than 150,000 and could be 1.7 million. So they basically don't know. There's this massive error bar. So they're saying 150,000 deaths at least in China, but up to 1.7 million. So... Either way, significantly more than the official reported figure in China of 4,600. So deaths massively, either way you look at it, massively underreported in China. Likewise, in India, this is pretty sobering numbers here as well. Um, so uh, 400, uh, 458,000 in India official deaths. The actual number is not less than 1.2 million and could be as high as 7.2 million deaths in India, excess deaths. So 
India's large population, of course, is getting on for about 1.4 billion now. But again, we, we see gross underestimates of the death figures in India uh, are likely when we look at total mortality. So basically one to seven million deaths in India. Quite incredible. Russia, likewise, greatly underreported. We've looked at this before. Deaths We know deaths in Russia are greatly underreported. The official figure, 236,000. The actual number, 870,000 to 910,000 deaths. So getting on for a million deaths in Russia as well. Again, we see underreported by what? Four, four times, probably. Massive underreporting. Indonesia... Um, Data often difficult to collect in Indonesia. Official number 143,000, real number 300,000 to 1.2 million in Indonesia. Large population country, of course. Pakistan, again, particularly underreported. Um, 28,477 officially reported. The real number is 300,000 to over 900,000 deaths. So massively underreporting in Pakistan. Likewise in Bangladesh. Official numbers 27,873, actual numbers 200,000 to 720,000. So again, pretty sobering numbers from Bangladesh. Uh, Turkey underreported, 71,052, um, officially reported the real number 130,000 to 420,000. Now you notice there's pretty big error bars on these because the data simply is not available. But these are the best estimates made based on multiple data points that they've collected and some um, some um, uh, artificial intelligence extrapolations, but based on as much data as they can get. But, you know, if we take Turkey, for example, they're pretty certain it's not less than 130,000. So it's getting on for at least double of the, the, the official figures, minimum, but could be 420,000. So there are these error bars. Mexico underreported uh, 288 thousand reported the actual figure 560 to 600,000 Brazil fairly accurate actually uh, 408,000 deaths reported officially in Brazil the actual numbers 660 to 740,000 and looking at the UK as we know where we do have accurate figures um, the UK uh, official deaths 28 days after a diagnosis 141,000 UK excess mortality is actually less and we know what it is it's not an estimate it's between 130,000 and 130,000 in other words it is accurate so some pretty sobering underreporting there in fact here's here's a graphic for the overall global underreporting so um, these are the official deaths along the bottom here from the economist the red line is the line of most probable uh, excess deaths the red error bar here is the 50% error, a potential error, and the grey is a 95% potential error. So um, pretty clear there, any, any way you look at it, um, even with the absolute lowest estimates, totally lowest estimates, um, way higher than the official, um, the official figures. So governments under-reporting for whatever reasons um, around the world. Quite a, quite a startling graphic there, really, from The Economist. Just a few things to bear in mind. Death tolls are heavily influenced by the age structure of a country's population. And we're going to be looking at Africa, hopefully, tomorrow, because it's got a young demographic, which is one of the reasons why the deaths there, thankfully, have been relatively low. And we're going to give evidence for why that is probably true. Um, but that, that, not on this video. Uh, rely on the assumption that officially published excess mortality numbers are accurate which, of course, often they are not. But somewhere like Russia, for example, where the overall figures are completely unreliable, um, we do know that um, people have collected data from all the regional areas in Russia where deaths are still accurately recorded uh, in the various regions where there's less central control. And um, you can add those all up, of course. And so we do have fairly accurate figures from Russia uh, in that regard. COVID-19 disruption. Some governments may have changed how they compile the data. People have been off, people working from home, all that kind of thing. So that casts doubt on it. And there is no doubt at all that some governments, I'm, I'm not going to name them, I've been looking at some, but some governments have fiddled the numbers. No question about that. I'm not going to give you more information because I can't give hard evidence for that at the moment. But there are, if, if, you, look, if you look on the Economist site, you'll see that some countries have fiddled it overtly because they've actually 
to change change the numbers retro, uh, retrospectively looking back and fiddled it to make them kind of adjust to be more consistent with their fiddling. Now, um, last one I want to look at, Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Uh, this is based University of Washington, of course. There's the official site there. Huge amount of uh, really quite impressive data on that. Now, they looked at this differently. They tried to estimate the actual number of deaths, the total number of deaths, not in excess mortality, but the total deaths uh, estimated for the number of deaths attributable to COVID-19 specifically, including underreported deaths, and their estimate is at least double the official numbers, uh, so the official numbers, just over 5 million, their estimate 11.9 million directly attributable to COVID-19. And here's their graphic that uh, illustrates that. So here we have the official numbers going along on the uh, orange. And then on the light green, we have their um, estimated more accurate numbers. And we see consistently governments have been underreporting for one reason or another. So that's the officially reported, that's the actual number of deaths. Quite interesting as well to look at their extrapolations into the next uh, month or so. Um, so here we are at the moment, 3rd of November. Um, so the actual number of deaths they predict is going to carry on going up. Well, of course it's going up because people can't come back to life. This is a cumulative number. So but the, the, there are people still going to be dying, even low, at a greater rate, because that line is going up more steeply than the official line there. The red line is the higher estimate. The green line is the lower estimate. The purple line is the likely estimate. So this problem is going to be going on uh, until early next year. And as I've said quite a few times, uh, in terms of um, Western countries with high vaccination rates, um, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, United States, UK, Europe, I do expect the numbers to start going down fairly dramatically due to herd immunity effects early in the new year, early in 2022. But let's just pause and remember that all of these official statistics represent uh, individuals. And uh, I think we'll leave today's talk there. And thank you for watching.